As soon as I had finished Cyberpunk Edgerunners, I went absolutely cyber psycho with theories that the ending is actually not what it seems. Fans also came up with their own theories, some of them pure genius and others captivating me in a way that's hard to explain. With the announcement of a second Cyberpunk anime, my time has come once again. So many fans are certain that David is dead and that we'll get an entirely new set of characters, while others are convinced that David is actually alive. With the absolute eyegasm that was Cyberpunk Edgerunners leaving fans around the world craving more, here are the most likely scenarios for Cyberpunk Season 2 ranked in order of insanity. At the end, I'll reveal what I believe really happened. So what do we know for sure? Adam Sandler pulls out his gun and David's face lights up, but we don't actually see David die or what happens afterwards. We get a splash transition implying David's death, but keep in mind the show has already used transitions like this to intentionally mislead us. Wait! I didn't do it! <laughs> David's body is never found, and the only ones who could have confirmed his death are either Arasaka or Adam Smasher. Falco and Lucy drove away before they actually saw David kick the bucket. The director had made it very clear for every other character that they were dead by showing the body and at times doing multiple takes. So this leads to the big question, what happens next? Number 1. Trauma Team Adaptation There are multiple comics set in the cyberpunk universe, my favorite being the Trauma Team comics. The story follows Nadia, a trauma team medic who goes through a traumatic experience on the field. She's confident that she's ready to get back to work even after everything she's been through, but later on she finds out that the memory of her trauma still haunts her deeply. I won't spoil the story, but there's an absolutely diabolical plot twist. The story is very well written, tackling the moral dilemmas that plague Night City. Do I do the right thing even if it puts others in danger? Do I live only for my own survival? What if someone who did something horrible to me does something kind for others? This is the beautifully cruel assessment the story places on you. What it means to lose your humanity is very much in line with the themes of Night City. Creating an adaptation of the Trauma Team comics seems very likely, since there would be no risk of retconning anything already in the story. Plus, they'd have an abundance of source material to work with. Edge Runners took a total of six years to create from beginning to end, and with the incredible success of the show, I imagine they don't want to make fans wait any longer than we already have for a follow-up. This approach would save time and cut down costs while giving fans another fix of the cyberpunk universe. Also, the showrunner for Edge Runners, Rafael Jockey, was on the editorial team for the comics, so we know he's fully aware of this possibility. My one hesitation is that the Trauma Team comics are actually a bit short, with not enough content for a full season. CDPR and Studio Trigger could expand on this awesome story, or they could create a separate episode for each of the different comics, giving us a broader picture of Night City. Number 2. An Anthology Series We could get a new set of characters and a plot entirely separate from Edge Runners, with some cheeky references included throughout. We could even see a different route from Cyberpunk 2077 like Nomad or Corpo. This approach is very likely and makes a lot of sense. They could expand the story while not retconning anything that's already happened. This however is a lot of work, demanding a brand new cast with a fresh new plot. On top of that it runs the risk of not being as good as Edge Runners, with the new characters failing to live up to the first time around. Number 3. Adam Smasher's Backstory Not only is it possible to get a season dedicated to Adam Sandler, but it's something I would really want to see. We know he was shot by an RPG and Arasaka offered him the choice to become a full mech cyborg. I would love to see more on the corporate wars, how Adam Smasher was brought up, and how he was basically revived after being reduced to a pile of mush. Many fans are dying to know how Adam Sandler became the boogeyman of Night City, and where his incredible ability to function as a cyber psycho came from. This series would cover what he did before working for Arasaka, and the true motivations of this bored out psychopath. Given what happens in Cyberpunk 2077, I'm curious how this season would end. This approach could also cover the one year time gap between Smasher supposedly shooting David and where Cyberpunk 2077 begins. Number 4. Katsuo's Story It feels like we were supposed to get a lot more from Katsuo. He became David's rival and then we stopped hearing about him completely. We know after getting decked by David he went to work for Arasaka, most likely taking over for his dad. This story could follow Katsuo and his new role as an Arasaka executive after dealing with his dad's death, facing the aftermath of David storming Arasaka Tower. But this scenario gets even more insane. And it ties directly into my last theory. Number 5. The Old Net What exactly happened with the Old Net? This was a huge plot point left unresolved. We know Lucy was forced by Arasaka to scavenge it at the risk of losing her life, being the only one of her group to escape. Big corporations are clearly looking for something extremely valuable in the net before the infamous Rosh Bartmos crashed it. Maybe Lucy uncovers more than she can handle in Season 2. There are lingering theories that Rice Bitcoin is actually still alive. Maybe Lucy finds him and they plan a way to finally take down the corporation that 
that took everything from her. Number six, the cycle continues. Some fans are convinced that David actually got Lucy knocked up before kicking the bucket. This might sound like a happy ending, but it's actually very dark. Just like how David felt resentment after losing his mother to gang goons, this new main character would grow up loathing Arasaka for what they did to his parents. Angry at the world, I imagine they would follow in their dad's footsteps to seek revenge. Maybe they succeed and break the cycle, but it's much more likely that history gets repeated in the same way. This approach makes perfect sense, as this new main character would have the Latino riz of his father with the fierce determination of his mom. A tragic story of a jaded street kid idolizing his father and seeking revenge on a corporation, only for history to repeat itself sounds very much in line with Night City. Number 7. David Smasher This is what I believe actually happened. David was kept alive, but his fate is worse than death. Arasaka preserved him either physically or through an engram, relentlessly experimenting on him before turning him into the next Smasher. Some fans believe the truck where David put on the cyberskeleton made a copy of his consciousness, which may have been the actual technology Arasaka wanted to test. It could be that Katsuo, out of pure contempt for David, could be the one behind this, working to make David's existence as miserable as possible. Imagine the cruelty of being forced to serve as the bodyguard to the corporation that took everything from you. But that's not all. David is also used to lure out and hunt Lucy. We know Lucy is a prized netrunner, on top of her knowing one of Arasaka's darkest secrets. Arasaka has every motivation to keep David alive, and to find Lucy. Lucy would learn about David's condition and desperately look for a way to bring him back. Arasaka keeping David alive would be knocking out two birds with one stone. Not just for Arasaka, but for CDPR and Studio Trigger, as they could bring back the characters we love, and also give us an incredible story at the same time. Notice how Adam Smasher used his left arm when aiming at Lucy and Falco's getaway car, but used his right arm cannon on David. There's a clear distinction between these two cannons. The exact same thing that happened to David happened to Johnny Silverhands. They were both shot by the exact same guy with the exact same cannon by the exact same company, and even from the exact same angle. We know Johnny was turned into an engram, and this was decades before the events of Edge Runners. So it's not only possible that David is alive, but it seems likely that David might have a similar fate to Silverhands. There are many parallels between them to back this up. They both took on Arasaka and had a netrunner as a love interest. Maybe David will also become an engram. Also, since when is there a Flash buildup to Adam Smasher's gun? This has led some fans to speculate that the Flash isn't Adam's gun, but Soul Killer ramping up. One genius commenter opened my eyes when he said the Flash was actually Adam taking a picture. Even if Adam Sandler shot David in the face, keep in mind Smasher was restored after becoming a pile of mashed potatoes, and this was 70 years earlier. Preserving David at the end of Edge Runner should be a walk in the park for Arasaka. They can preserve his body or keep him as a construct without anyone from the outside knowing it. They have so much more to gain by keeping their valuable test subject alive, obtaining precious data on the cyberskeleton, studying David's tolerance, and of course making him into a super weapon, not to mention using him to lure out Lucy. David was in his right mind the last time we saw him, indicating that maybe David beat cyberpsychosis. Lucy was able to bring him back, meaning that maybe he hadn't fully gone off the deep end here. He's fully aware and present in his last scene. He gives a smug smile and appears to be content with the life he chose in his last supposed moments. It'd be incredibly wasteful and sounds highly unlikely for such an efficient tech corporation like Arasaka not to capitalize on this, especially after the battle was clearly won. Ripper Doc actually told David he was Smasher 2.0, which could be direct foreshadowing for what comes next. Also, in JK's lab, there's a brain dance on the shelf titled It's Alive Not, which to me foreshadows how David was kept alive, but he's not really himself. Smasher telling David he'd make an interesting construct furthers my theory. So what does this mean? David is brainwashed by Arasaka, forced to hunt down Lucy. After an epic fight, I imagine Lucy will be able to bring David back, since she's already brought him back from the peak of cyberpsychosis. Maybe this ties into the old net theory, and Lucy discovers something in the old net that can help her rescue David. Imagine having to fight a fully brainwashed David Smasher in either Season 2 or a DLC of the game. Some fans believe Lucy will have David in her head using the relic, since Edge Runners already resembles Johnny Silverhand's life, and Season 2 could take place further in the future. What if David and Lucy can figure out a way to bring him back while also saving herself? Other fans think David became a part of Max Tech, mainly because of the announcement trailer for Cyberpunk 2077. We see a cyber psycho woman getting domed and in the very next shot we see she became a part of Max Tech. What an ironic twist that David's incredible resistance to cyber psychosis could be used to stop other cyber psychos. What do you think? Which scenario is your favorite? Share this video with a fellow Chum and special thanks to my generous patrons. Zip me some eddies if you enjoyed the video and I'll catch you in the next one.